Welcome back, everybody, to the Successful Parents Podcast. I'm your host, Wanda Howard, and today we have with us Derek Vickers. He is the CEO of Victory Real Estate Group, and I'm really excited to hear his inspiration behind what he does because he has a very specific niche in real estate that me and my own background, I have a little bit of a uh, friction with. So I'm excited to go into how we even got into this area. So welcome, Derek. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited to be here and uh, hopefully I can provide some value to your listeners here and, you know, maybe I can provide one little nugget that helps someone change some aspect of their life and, and parenting life, whatever that may be. So I'm excited. Awesome. So tell everybody more specifically what you do in real estate. What kind of real estate do you specifically help with? Yeah, so we do, um, we own and operate um, 38 mobile home park communities in the Southeast. We have about 2,000 uh, lots. And so it's it's an interesting niche and in industry that a lot of people really, more people more recently, but not many people think about investing in a mobile home community because they have a certain stigma about them and, and things that we all have probably heard before because I grew up in uh, an area where there was, uh, you know, a lot of mobile home parks. I had friends that lived in mobile home parks. And so that's what we do. We really take communities that are in disrepair, that have tons of problems, that they're going to be redeveloped. Um, and you know, there's a, an affordable housing crisis in America. I mean, there's no there's no affordable housing. Yeah. And so these parks are literally the, one of the last legs of affordable housing that's available. So we take these things that are going to be redeveloped for, you know, $2,500 a month multifamily. And we bring them back to life and we make them a clean, safe community to, to live in at that point. That's so cool. So I have to divulge a little bit of why there's friction there. I I lived in mobile home parks for a lot of my growing up. And um, so just being there, I never would have looked at a mobile home park and thought that's the dream. That's what I'm going yeah. for that. Like I never would have thought that. So I love yeah. that you saw that and you saw the opportunity and the people in there because there's such good people that come from everywhere and including mobile home parks. And just like you said, there's such that stigma that I love that you're bringing that back to life and helping people feel that value in there again. So what brought that yeah. on? Why the heck did you see a mobile home park and see such value there? Yeah, so I, I had actually, when I had, I told you a little bit about how I moved to um, Florida and I started selling insurance and we can talk more about that if it, if it comes up, but I always wanted to get into real estate investing. I always wanted to do that because I knew it provided long-term, you know, wealth, stability, and safety for my family that I didn't have then, but my future family that I have now. And so I didn't know if it was going to be apartments, duplexes, houses, or what. Um, then I chose apartments, but then I started looking at the prices of these things and they're like, you know, 20 or 50 million bucks. And I'm like, okay, well, that's a little bit difficult for me to get into initially. I didn't have really any money. And, and so I had a friend that actually was investing in mobile home parks and he told me about the asset class. So I started doing some research on it and I was like, okay, wow, like this is great. You know, you can actually solve a very, very much needed, you know, a big problem, affordable housing. And um, it's also a good, um, you know, wealth strategy as well to create um, security while helping other people. So it was like a win-win-win situation. And I know, I know it's odd, and you know, I got all kinds of crazy stories about stuff that's happened in mobile home parks. But um, that's really how I got into it. That's so cool. And the stories is what makes it even better. If if you have a smooth sailing business, that's boring. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if smooth sailing and business go go together. Yeah, definitely not. Um, so now for like, what do you do specifically when people want to get in touch with you? Is it specifically to buy your homes? Do you help other people know how to do real estate? What does that look like? Yeah. So now, um, you know, we've built a structure and a business structure where we have property managers that are on site and handling the day to day stuff. I'm still involved in some of the, you know, the larger issues that we have. 
Um, they can vary from, from many different things. But so now I'm working on, I've actually got a mentorship program where I'm helping people learn how to invest in real estate and mobile home parks. Um, and, you know, we have a, actually we're doing a webinar here in a couple of weeks where I'm going to teach people, you know, the main reasons why they don't move forward and, you know, buy a mobile home park and the reasons why I didn't buy really a real estate investment um, first off. And you can reach me on literally every social media platform. So Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn. Am I missing any Twitter? I'm on Twitter. <laughs> All of them at uh, at Derek Vickers eight eight five, and I'm sure we can we'll drop those in the in the show links too. Yeah, awesome. Yes, we will definitely have those in the show links for everybody that wants to get a hold of you because that is a huge resource for newbies going into real estate or just being new in the mobile home area of it because it's so nice to just see other people and know what's been done and know what works and what doesn't work. That's huge. So thank yeah. you, for that amazing resource. Yeah. Um, and I, I just one thing. So I post on there daily, multiple times daily. I'm in the parks, even I'm giving tips and strategies on things. So there's a lot of value that I provide on there. And I, you know, I'm pretty goofy too. So I like to have fun with it. And I do share some of the crazy mobile home park stories on the, on there. So you can get a <laughs> kick out of some of those. Oh, that's awesome. And I love that you're actually there and being a part of the communities that you're helping to improve. I feel like it's so easy when you're doing something, especially in real estate, to just buy something and then hope that it all goes well and never actually get to know the people there. So that's huge to treat it differently, to treat it for the value of the people that are actually there, not just the property itself. So for very sure. cool. Um, okay. So now and we've talked about your business and people know how to find you and know why they should get to know you better. Let's jump into the family side of things and how this is all balanced out with your family. So right now, paint a picture for us. What does your family look like? What are the dynamics that you have to be aware of in your life? Yeah, so we have, I, I'm married, obviously, and I have a two-year-old. She's like two years and three months now, uh, Lily. And then we have another son that we, he's a month old now. His name is Duke. And uh, yeah, so it's, it's, it's definitely added an interesting aspect of the business. And I think, you know, especially for entrepreneurs, like the, the importance of still being able to have that, you know, family time that, that you have on a daily basis is you, you have to be cognizant of that. And, you know, these kids, they're only this little for, you know, my daughter's two now. And I remember when she was like as, as big as Duke is. And I'm like, man, she's already running around. She's talking to me. And, and so I think it's, it's, it's super important to, to be aware of getting to spend that time with them. It doesn't have to be for hours because I can't spend hours with Lily right now. She hangs out with Papa for 20 minutes or 30 minutes. And she's like, okay, I'm done. I'm going to do run off and do something else now. <laughs> Um, but you know, and I think one of the things I think I, I've learned that, that I've done well is that, you know, someone can say that they're spending time with their kids and their family, but they're sitting with them and they're ticking on their phone. Like I, I would say if you're doing that for three hours, it's more quality to put your phone away and do 30 minutes, non-interrupted, 100% attention on the family and the kids. It's, it's more valuable than just sitting there for three hours, ticking through your phone, not paying attention anyways. So um, I, I think that's what, what kind of the question that you asked me, but I kind of went off and and so hopefully. Yeah, that's perfect. Just getting to know your family most. I think it's so amazing how as we're caught in our own little houses, our own little world, we get so used to our dynamics of I have this many kids and we have these events that we have to go to and they're needing this kind of uh, support right now in their lives. And it's easy to feel like we're the only ones. So just opening up that aspect of like, okay, you have two kids. These are their ages. This is what you're going through on top of running your business. Um, so right now, what is like the biggest concern for you as a dad? Um, and a husband and business owner, what, what keeps you up at night with your kids right now? 
Yeah. And I think it's, you know, with, so with, with my goals and the things I want to do, like some of the things that concerns me is like, you know, in order to get there, in order to provide that security for your family, you have to, I have to really structure my time with how, you know, as much time that I'm spending with them. And sometimes I'm in my mind and I'm like, okay, am I spending the much, you know, am I spending enough time with them? Am I not? And, you, you know, you go back and forth to this thing and you're trying to just balance it all, which is sort of impossible when you're an entrepreneur because you're you're working all the time. Like it's just it's just the reality of it. Right. And, then, you know, we're doing you know, we're doing personal development things. My wife and I are we're doing studying. We're um, still working out. We're doing, I'm doing these podcasts and things. I'm building my social, my brand on social media. So I think concerns for me is just being able to be there and be that fatherly influence on a daily basis, because these are their most important years, right? Yeah. And I, I think it's just very important to um, be there for them. And like I said before, at least some during the day. But also, I do believe that like it's not a bad thing to teach your kids to work hard because yeah. that's where I got my work ethic from. My, my parents are blue collar parents. You know, they, they still work. You know, my dad's a construction worker. My mom's an office manager is an office. They're not, you know, crazy well off by any means, but they're great people. But my mom, she, I can't even remember when she missed a day of work ever. And, and the same with my dad. And they, they were always working, always doing something. And so I think that, like, even when you're working, your kids see you. And um, I think that's just very, very, very important. So that, that, that concerns me sometimes with um, knowing that I thinking that I need to spend more time with them when I'm probably doing the right thing. It's just that back and forth in your mind, you know, fighting with yourself. Yeah. Kind of thing. Uh, I love that. And I love how, as we start talking about our kids, inevitably our parents come up, like we start like, okay, this is the relationship and the environment that I'm creating for them and with them. And this is what happened to me as a kid. And our brain does do that, like push and pull and back and forth. And so thank you for being vulnerable with that, like that nagging voice. We all have it. Of, is this enough? Is this going to be okay? Is this going to work out? Um, and just like you said, probably, but how do you know that? Um, so right. what is, what is your dream? What, like, what's your dream for your family? Why the heck would you even care about personal development and working out and like your career and all these things like what's the dream specifically for you guys that keeps you motivated and not just doing the bare minimum yeah I think it's just um obviously I think one of the you know a really important thing that I look at is setting a, a good example for my kids I want them to see my wife and I getting up in the morning and working out I want them to see us you know eating well I want them to see us you know, brushing our teeth, you know, something simple as that, like you're always taking care of yourself. I think it's so important to, to set that example. So I think that's, that's one. And then, you know, building a life and showing your kids that like, you should be successful, you should want to do bigger things, because it's not just about the money. I mean, it's just, you know, it's fine. It's, it's great. But at some point, it gets to a point where it doesn't matter. But like, what impact are you having? You know, what charities are you helping? Like we have, my wife and I have charities that we're passionate about and we believe in that cause. And, you know, that's a, a really a desire for me to be able to help that specific organization out um, a lot. Right. And you need finances to, to do that. And, you know, I think that goes back to setting a good example for your kids. Like, hey, guys, this isn't just about money. But you can work to actually make a difference in, in the world, too. And it's so much more fulfilling when it's about that value, that difference, instead of just chasing the dollar, because that that never ends. As soon as you make 100,000, then there's 500,000, then a million. And like, there's always more that you could consume. Yeah. And it, right. it's never satisfying. Yeah, so, for sure. What an amazing example. So yeah. what would you say right now? is the biggest thing that, that keeps you from that goal that keeps getting in your way or making you feel like you can't reach that or does that? Um, 
Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, like probably every other entrepreneur, I think it's really, you know, self-imposed things that, you know, these blocks that we have in our minds, whether it's, you know, someone said that you couldn't do something or things like that. I think it's just self-imposed limitations that we have. And we put those blocks there for whatever reason. And I think um, part of success is actually figuring out how to overcome those blocks yeah. and being aware of when it comes in, like, hey, I need to put this, you know, property under contract or something We're like, well, you know, I can't do that because of this. That's like an indication to like, OK, go. Right. That's an indication to, to move forward with that thing. And I think that too, you know, back to really setting a good example is, you know, teaching your kids those sort of principles, like, hey, you should do things that you fear, you know, you should do things that are outside of your comfort zone. Like we encourage our, our daughter to go talk to people, because like, if you're not scared to go, to, if you're scared to go talk to people, like you're never going to get anywhere in the world. Like my mother always told me, don't talk to strangers, which look, it's not terrible advice, but on the other hand, it kind of is because then, you know, I think when these kids, you know, grow up, they're, they're scared to make a sales call. Like I was in insurance. I was freaking terrified on a daily basis to call because I thought, I don't know if I attributed the call to the business owner of my mom yelling at me and saying, you know, stop doing this or stop doing that kind of thing. But um, I, I think that's, that's important. Yeah. Definitely. And then there's always that like other side of the problem or the voice that's saying, oh, well, now they're they're too outgoing or they're going to be in people's faces or are they going to be too annoying. And, and there's always that like, how do we make sure that it's just the right amount of they're confident, they're capable, they're going, but they're not um, in people's faces because that's what we've like trained them to do. So such yeah. a good good insight. So what have you tried right now? What what things have helped you or in what things have you tried and like never do this guys, whoever's listening never ever do this one thing. <laughs> so what have been your experiences? Yeah, um are you talking about with with kids specifically or Yeah, with just... with your kids of just being able to know that you are setting that example that you want to be setting, knowing that yeah. you are giving them the tools that they need. What right what has helped you feel like you are doing that and what thing like where you talked about getting out of your own way and getting out of your own head and being self-aware what have helped you be and that can involve business as well but what has helped you be self-aware and what things have been like that was a terrible thing I'm never doing that again <laughs> yeah so a great question too I think you know being more self-aware just comes from like you know it comes with you know I think it comes with age and, you know, your experience in life. And I can just get a sense when there's some kind of things dropping out with the family. Okay. I know I need to spend more time with my wife now. Yeah. Okay. I know we need to do a date night now. Okay. I know I need to, you know, fit some more time in for, for the kids. So I think you can, for some reason, I can just sense it, right? When I know there's a little less love lingering in there, I got to go and patch that up. Um, and so what I've done here is that, you know, when it hits five o'clock, typically I'm usually for an hour, just boom here, here with the family, I'm helping feed Duke or, or doing one thing. I'm taking them on, I'm going up to the playground with them, which is always a good time. I walk in, you know, just walking to the mailbox with the kids is, is fun. And I would say that, that, um, you know, that is one thing, just making sure that you can, you block out that time, even it's like a big, I hate to say, like you schedule your day in a time block, time block out the time with the family and, yeah. and make sure, make sure this is somewhere else. And this, cause this, that rings to this. <laughs> yep. Um, Phone swatches, and, everything. It's amazing how distracting they could be. Yeah. And, and I would tell you to, what something to not do um, is just to not pay attention to it at all and put it on autopilot. So if you think about if you're an entrepreneur and you put your business on autopilot and don't put some push and effort into it for a month, what's going to happen to it? Yeah. Your stats are going to go down, you know, maybe revenue is going to go down. It's the same thing in your, in your marriage and with your kids. If you're not doing those actions, like 
it's gonna it, it's gonna drop down just like a business. The stats are gonna drop down. <laughs> and I I have a list of things that that I do in the morning. So my family, even my mom, dad, and my sister, I send a text out to them every day. Love you. And I send a text out every day to my wife. And I actually forgot to do that action to my wife here recently for you know a few months. Um, and I started doing it here again recently, just every morning, sending her a little gift or a meme or something. I love you. And she texted me back this morning, actually, like, wow, you know, I really missed you, your, your morning text doing that. And how much effort does that take? Oh, it's it doesn't amazing. take a lot. It yeah. doesn't take a lot. And, it, and yeah, so. I really like, too, how you, you pointed out just the simplicity. I think it's so easy as parents, especially as our kids get older, to feel like I'm not doing enough. And so then when we're there with them we're beating ourselves up instead of enjoying the time with them. So mm. walking out to the mailbox with them, you're relishing that moment of like, this is incredible. I have my kids. This is so fun. And watching their little feet move and like all of the things of just that simple experience. But if you're sitting there the whole time being like, this isn't enough, we're not doing like some crazy rides at a park or something like this isn't enough. Then you're spending the whole time, degrading yourself and not actually being with the person that's right there beside you so I think that's yeah. such a huge huge thing and then along with those texts I my husband does the same thing when he's coming home from work he will send me a text every single day I'm on my way home and he comes at home at different times so I I always have appreciated that but for a while he was forgetting and I didn't even notice how much I was missing it until he sent one again and I was like Oh, that felt good. Ah. <laughs> right. Like it's it makes such a difference, those those little things. Um, so right now then, um, what would you say is like the biggest indicator to you or the biggest like um fulfillment in your family when you can achieve XYZ in the day? What does that look like to you to make you like have a breath of fresh air and feel like I'm a good dad today? Yeah. So I think it's, you know, and it doesn't, it, it doesn't all directly correlate with the kids and the family, but it does indirectly. Because if I get up, you know, I get up at four and go to the gym, have a great workout. I start, you know, I get things accomplished on my list during the day and, you know, lunchtime I'm working from home or going to the parks or something. If I can help my wife out with the babies for lunchtime for a little bit, that's good. And then, um, come five o'clock, I get that time, that, that hour, it's about an hour, an hour, 15 minutes where I'm there. We go to the park. I'm, I'm, you know, climbing up the the ladder and going down the slide with Lily and she's, you know, Papa, Papa down slide, Papa down slide. <laughs> and that's, um, it's just really cool. And if I'm, if I'm out of town or something and I come in and I open the door and Lily's like, Papa, and just runs to me. I mean, that, that I mean, you could be having the worst day in the world and <laughs> that happens. And it's like, okay, none of this other stuff matters. Yeah. Uh, I love that response. It's so true to see the light in a child's eyes when they see you. It's like, huh, okay. Everything's fine. All, all yeah. Is well. <laughs> yeah, totally. Totally. Um, so right now then what would be your biggest advice for parents who they want to be able to relish at those little moments, they want to be able to get out of their own way more. What was like the single moment in your life that really helped you wake up and realize that it, it, it was in your power to get out of your own way? What was that moment for you? Yeah, it was it was the moment and I was listening to something and it sounds like it sounds a little crazy, but to treat the 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 everything like you would your business. So the family is and the kids are a business. It yes. needs, there needs to be actions written, written out. You've got, you know, if you're in sales, you got to make calls every day. You got to follow up with people every day. So, you know, family and kids, there's these, there's actions you need to take every day as well. And that was a light bulb for me. I'm like, oh, this is going to be easy because I just need to write down every day. <laughs> I need to text and, you know, talk and spend the time and check that off your list. And, you know, I think, a lot of people mess up and saying, oh, they, they leave that on autopilot. And so you see a lot of unhappy marriages and things like, unfortunately, society is like, 
you know, there's more divorce. I don't know the numbers, but I think there's more divorces than things now too. But a lot of that's media stuff, you know, maybe another conversation, but like purposefully putting the attention on it and not letting it go into autopilot. Because if you're working a job or you have your business, if you let it go on autopilot, same thing's going to happen. Yeah. It's going to go down. And, and I think so, you hit it right on like right on the money where it's not so much about the fin- the phonetics of what you do, but being very intentional about it, making sure it stays yeah. your focal point. Because I totally, I like, I love when people come on here and give very specific things like that. You said every day you write out what you're, you need to do every day for your family and treat it like you do your business. But the thing I want to also make sure, since this is a huge platform and we have thousands of listeners every day, I want to make sure those listening, every family looks different. Your personality is different. If writing down your criteria of the day, isn't how you run your business then don't do that with how you run your family, like run your business, how you run or run your family, like you run your business. Cause you've already established what works very well for you in your business. So use those same things in your family. If you're like Derek and writing them down, like step-by-step step, all the things that's incredible. That is a huge thing. And I feel like that will help so many things not fall through the cracks. So if you want to try it, definitely experiment with that. Cause that, that is huge to just get out of your head and write it down. But I just want to make yeah. sure that we make that clear for everybody listening. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. I mean, it's not what works for me may not work for you. I just know for me personally, like when I get stuff out of my head, because I for, like you get in the whirlwind of your business, you got an employee calls and blah, blah, blah. And then you're like, oh, I was going to do this. And then a week later, you're like, oh, man, you know, I forgot to do that. So for me, I got to write stuff down. And so it's the same, <laughs> the same thing. Yeah. If I don't write it down, I feel like mom brain, parent brain, business brain, whatever you want to call it. I, I does not, it doesn't get done. It somehow something else takes precedence. So uh, yeah, definitely writing it down is a huge thing for me as well. And even if it's just taking a criteria at the end of the day, sometimes it's the journaling of just remembering what did I do today? And like, oh, yeah. I, I didn't do this one thing that I did want to make sure I happen. So then I can put it in the criteria for tomorrow and make sure yeah. that oh cute sure. what a great insight well Derek thank you again and everybody listening I will be putting all of those links down below so make sure that you go and ch- check out what he does and be a part of his webinar that he's going to be doing on his real estate and what not to do and what to do because it's anybody can do business anybody can succeed in that world but the ones that are succeeding alongside their families, those are the ones we want to make sure that we're following. Those are the ones we want to get behind because that is when the world changes. That is when our own lives improve and we don't get to the top of all the money and all the wealth with nobody with us. We want to make sure that our family is there with us. So thank you so much, Derek, for coming and we will see you all next time. Thank you, Wanda.